Okay, guys, if you can take your eyes off of this beautiful scenery in the background, I'm going to try to give you some cruise tips if you're trying to plan an Alaskan cruise. First of all, yes, don't I look lovely? I don't even need this coat right now. I'm just doing it because I haven't, and I have a hat on only because I haven't washed my hair in three days. Because <laughs> it's been, there's too much to see and do. So step number one, I'm just gonna tell you, don't worry about being fancy on this cruise, you guys. Just enjoy yourself, be comfortable and relax. So the number one question, in my opinion, when planning an Alaskan cruise is, what time of year do you go? Well, it's June 15th right now. Pretty damn good time to come, in my opinion. If you are booking your first Alaskan cruise, I would probably stick with June and July. Um, beginning of August, it's getting a little iffy, and I'm gonna tell you why. I actually spoke with a park ranger today. May is not a great time of the year to come, unless you wanna see snow. You will probably see more snow in the month of May. But the wildlife is just starting to wake up. June, July, it's peak season for a reason. August, it's starting to get, you know, a little bit slimmed down. September, from what the park ranger told me, not a lot of humpback sightings at that time for the whales. And you might not see as much snow. Now, a lot of people like to come in September because maybe, you know, children, they're looking for a more relaxing environment, less crowds. If that's the case, go for it. Just realize that you might have more rain in May less wildlife in September. First of all, we're gonna decide on what trip do you book? Because there's many options. You can do Seattle round trip, you can do Vancouver round trip, or you can do what they call northbound, southbound. Now, the first time that we did a cruise, we did a inside passage round trip in and out of Vancouver, and it was glorious. I really did enjoy it. All of the cruises go to the main stops, Skagway, Juneau, and Ketchikan. But if you're lucky, and you can get Glacier Bay, which is where I'm talking to you from today, or Hubbard Glacier, or at College Fjord, which we're gonna do tomorrow. It's just adds to the mystique of being on a cruise ship and having a moving picture card the whole week that you're on board. So if I could have a, the perfect scenario, I would probably do northbound out of Vancouver, Inside Passage. The Inside Passage cruising for me is calm. It's beautiful vistas, starboard or port side, and then stay on the boat and come back down southbound. That's a bucket list that I wanna do after this trip. Now this trip I'm doing right now was north northbound Vancouver. We're gonna get dropped off in Whittier and then we're actually gonna do some interior on our own. That's another episode. So that's my suggestions. I guess maybe if it's your first cruise, maybe do a round trip. Vancouver, Vancouver. I think coming out of Vancouver is a little bit better than Seattle. Just my opinion. Number two question that a lot of people ask, what excursions do you book? Really guys, that's preference. I mean, there are amazing excursions that you get to do at every single port. If you can watch the episodes um, on this channel, I'm going to feature the excursions that we did in Ketchikan, Juneau, and Skagway. You just can't go wrong. It's really what you want to do, in my opinion. And anything that you can do on your own, do it. For example, in Juneau, you don't need an excursion to go to Mendenhall Glacier. You can flag down a taxi, go on your own, do the hike, go to the visitor center and enjoy it. Unless you want to do a, a flight where you actually get to land on the glacier, blah, blah, blah. But it's very expensive. So watch some more videos and I'll get a little bit more into detail. But there are tons of things that you can do. But also remember, all of these ports are always really, uh, basically you port almost in town, especially with all in America, in my experience. And so you can get off the ship and just walk around if you really don't want to spend a lot of money going to see the sites. But it is nice to go fishing or to go on the train in Skagway um, or to try to go see more glaciers. But you're gonna see a lot of glaciers off the boat if you're in Glacier Bay, packing. Oh, packing. Let me get to that page for you because I thought that I was doing this amazing packing. I, I, I fouled. I fouled again, you guys. Less is more. 
less is more. Okay, you guys, please trust me when I tell you that. This is not about taking pictures of yourself for Instagram. This is not about looking good every single night for dinner. This is about enjoying nature, the beauty of Alaska and wildlife. You don't need to pack a bunch of fancy clothes. Now, you do need a couple nice items if you wanna go have a nice dinner while on port, which most of us do. So for men, I would suggest one sport coat, maybe two shirts and maybe even a t-shirt or a nice little sweater you could wear under your sport coat, one pair of dress slacks. That's all you need. There's laundry on the ship. A lot of times they do unlimited laundry packages that you can buy. And if you're in a suite, it's included with your suite on most cruise lines. So for women, ladies, again, we're not here to judge your fashion and they don't have the big gala nights that they used to. So if you want to do that, that's fine. But really just find either a nice like black skirt, a black jumper and decorate with fun costume jewelry and scarves. One pair of heels, ladies, one pair. You do not need any more pairs of heels on a Alaskan cruise, just one. I packed uh, a black long skirt that I can put with a denim shirt, tank top, or fa fancy silk tank. I also packed a jumpsuit. I packed a couple other things I didn't even need. I'm not even gonna tell you how much I packed because I screwed up again. That's why I'm trying to help you guys right now. Okay, the most important stuff, what you wear during the day. Loungewear for me is key. I wanna be relaxed. Coffee on the balcony, tea on the balcony walking around, even on the, the deck three of the Nordon ship, there's like a, a little walking trail. You could sight hump back, but you get your exercise in. So for me, lounge clothes, key. I love Barefoot Dreams. I think they have amazing comfy pants that are warm, kind of cuts a little bit of the chill and the wind, and they have beautiful cardigans and sweaters. Layering is critical. Tank top, and then a sweater over top of it, or even a long sleeve t-shirt and then a sweater over that, two to three layers, because there's some parts of the day it gets cold and then when the sun's out like this, I'm actually roasting right now in this jacket. <laughs> um, and you only really need a couple pairs because just keep wearing them. I mean, you know what guys, listen, we don't have to wear something fresh every day. It's Alaska, you're not sweating that much. For men, same thing. Maybe a comfortable pair of like Columbia pants, uh, sport pants or jeans that you enjoy is fine for the day. Now, when we're touring and we went into Ketchikan and Skagway and Juneau, Ketchikan is a little chillier and we went on a coastal cruise um, to an oyster farm and it can get a little chilly. Uh, even when we did the whale watch in Juneau, it can get chilly at night. A pair of black, I don't know, I, I guess I call them outside pants. Um, REI sells them, Columbia sells them. Just a nice pair of basic black pants that comfortable and has pockets because you want to be able to put your phone in there, your key card, your ship card, your ID, any cash. And if you could maybe pack two pair, one that's a little more lined, a little warmer when it's colder over the evenings and a pair that's not so heavily lined that maybe even turn into shorts during the day. That's my suggestion. That's all you need, you guys. Trust me, leggings are fine. But leggings can get a little chilly. I really think like the black outdoor kind of hiking type pants, outdoor pants is a better option. T-shirts wise, just two t-shirts, black and white or whatever your favorite color is. Maybe a couple tank tops so you can layer a couple or maybe one long sleeve shirt that you enjoy, one sweater, maybe a hoodie or a sweatshirt jacket. Coat wise, you really don't need a heavy coat when you're in Alaska in the summer, you guys. So. This coat right here is just a little Patagonia. It's really thin. I don't know if you can kind of see, sorry. It's really thin, it packs well, it cuts the wind. And if you have your layers on, just layer over top of it. Another thing that my girlfriend did is she packed a really nice kind of wind resistant Columbia jacket, black that matched her pants, classy. But then she also had a really nice raincoat that she would put over top of that for extra warmth. So I would go that route, then a big old parka because you just don't need it in the summer here in Alaska. I really, I don't even need this hat, you guys. I'm just being stupid right now. So let's take it off because I'm burning up right now. All right, what else, what else? Oh, scarves. Scarves change up your outfit. So if you get a little bored, a fun little scarf, a fun little toboggan hat, ear bands, those are important because it can get windy. The other critical thing, don't laugh, you guys, a fanny pack so much easier or a light backpack. 
I thought I was gonna be cute. I bought this cute little backpack. I got it on clearance. I thought this would be perfect. I mean, it's been durable, but it wasn't very functional when we were hiking. My girlfriend, Debbie, had a fanny pack. It was perfect, big enough that she could roll her coat in because we kept stripping our coats off during the day touring, and I really wish I could have not had to carry a coat around. Um, so, for the day, evening, just a cute little evening bag. You just need one, ladies, just one. So get something that'll match all your outfits. My girlfriend bought me this cute little Mary Frances uh, bag. They sell these on the cruise ship too, but Mary Frances has cute little bags. You can put your phone in there. There's a zipper. You can put your money and your key card and your lipstick in there. It's all you need. Easy to pack. And there's all kinds of cool little colors and varieties that you can do. That's it. Your backpack and this. Don't pack your Louis Vuittons and your Gucci handbags and all your fancy handbags. Nobody cares. You're in Alaska. We're more worried about the glaciers and the mountains and the humpback whales, okay? Also, a vest. I always love, like, a little puffy vest. One. My dumb butt packed two. I didn't need two. I just needed one, you guys. Denim shirt is always nice because it's functional. You could wear it at night with pretty jewelry, with a skirt, or nice slacks. But you can also wear it during the day. Um, with a tank top and make it look more athletic. So I packed a, kind of a black denim one and a blue denim one. I've only worn the black denim one. Just pack one. I'm telling you guys, I was reading a Facebook blog and the best piece of advice was pack two weeks before your cruise, then go back in, take half of it out and, and just put half back in the bag. Best tip ever. I only took two pieces out instead of half. I should have listened to the lady that told me to do that. If you're getting excited about a cruise, get on a Facebook group and join a Facebook group. There are tons of them. For There's like uh, VIP Alaska, I love Alaska. Uh, even your ship usually has a Facebook page with people that have been on it and they'll give you fun advice, uh, tips to read about, and you can ask questions on there and there's always gonna be people that are gonna answer your questions on those Facebook posts, trust me. Sometimes you don't wanna hear the answer, but They'll give them to you, trust me. Binoculars. This is the most important thing, in my opinion, that you could pack. They do supply binoculars in most of your rooms, but they might not be the best. This particular pair that I have is a Bushnell, and they're autofocus. I don't know if you're like me. I have a hard time focusing binoculars. These are wonderful. They're called um, Extra Wide Field of View. This is a 900. If you could get more, I would. Thankfully, our suite had some really high-powered binoculars, and I've been able to see things up close, but on the whale watches and for scouting stuff, this autofocus has been spectacular, even for looking at glaciers and mountains and sneaking onto the cruise ships and kind of checking out their rooms. I'm so nosy. I'm sorry. All right. Obviously, socks. You want some comfy socks. I'm all about my Bombas. I got my puffin socks on today because, you know, I was hoping to see a puff. <laughs> so, your most comfortable socks comfortable shoes repeat comfortable shoes tennis shoes or i love um, on clouds because they have waterproof tennis shoes and it could rain so waterproof shoes i think are important or like a waterproof hiking shoe boot i brought three pair i needed one maybe two max I have my waterproof ones, which I could have walked in, but then of course I had to bring my walking shoes and then I brought some hiking boots. I've worn the hiking boots once. I hope during the interior, I will wear them a little bit more, I'm gonna be honest, because again, I overpacked. I'm just trying to help you guys with this. Hat and gloves are key, or the headband. I think I already said that. Anything that you can kind of cram in the pockets of your coats or your fanny pack or your backpack because you will be taking them on and off a lot. I also think for the ladies, a cute pair of slides, like really comfortable little slides you could just put your feet in and out of. Not really flip-flops, um, just a pair of shoes that you could put on really quick if you're just going to grab a cup of coffee or, or whatnot. So there was one more thing I forgot to tell you about when it comes to packing for any cruise. Wipes. Just get your own wipes. It's smart. Clean the remote controls, everything in the room. Room stewards do a good job of cleaning, but sometimes it's just nice to know that if you need to wipe something down, you can. I even keep them in my purse because you forget, you touch the elevator buttons, you touch the handrails. With the pandemic kind of still going on, it is nice to know, have peace of mind that you're constantly wiping them hands off. So that's the other thing that I usually do, throw in my packing list when I'm boarding any cruise. 
And then my final tip for you guys is just enjoy the sea days. In Alaska, it's all about the sea days. And if it's not even a sea day, coming into port, leaving out of port, whatever time. For example, when we arrived in Juneau uh, on this trip, from about seven in the morning till about 10 o'clock in the morning, just gorgeous scenic coastline cruising. And then after we left Juneau, again, more scenic coastline cruising. So remember that your mornings and your evenings, because it stays light up here till practically midnight, you get majestic views. Enjoy that, be outside you guys. Don't be inside at the casino. I'm sorry, I know the cruise lines want to spend money and they want you in the casino and then spending money in the bars. And But this is about Alaska. Take it all in, get a glass of wine, get a hot chocolate, get a cup of tea, get outside. And remember, it's good to sleep in, but damn, you do miss a lot. So my suggestions is take in as much as you can, relax during the day, have a little fun at night when it's dark out and you can't see anything because that is fun. I get it. But really, really just try to take in these majestic views of an Alaskan cruise and good luck. And if you have any questions, write them down below and I'll try to answer them for you because Alaskan cruising is probably my most favorite thing to do. Hope I've helped you guys out.